Hi everyone, last thing in this section is just to work a little bit on converting between degrees and radians. So again, we're going to go through a, a fairly big section of the quarter where we kind of dump degrees for a while, but we're going to use them in this early section and we're going to use them again later. So this seemed like a good time to talk about switching back and forth. Uh, one way to do that would just be to kind of look at your circle and get the idea of where it's at and try and figure out which two are the same. Uh, but we can actually use the same thing that was the key to figuring out where all the smaller angles were. The fact that we know that one full rotation is, um, which one are we doing here, is 300 and, oops, let me switch to a pen, 360 degrees, uh, or a half a rotation is 180 degrees. And we also know the answer to that in radians. So one full rotation is 2 pi radians and 180 degrees is pi radians. So we can say, um, let's see, 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. And notice I write the degree symbol on the degrees and that's really important. You should always do that. That's your units. I don't write anything on the radians because radians are actually unitless. I don't think I went into this as well as I should have it when we introduced radians. The beauty of radians is that what you're uh, counting there is not inches or centimeters or degrees. It's how many times your radius fits around the circumference of the circle, the outside of the circle. So that's just a number of radii, right? That's not like uh, any sort of length. It's a rotation that catches one radius or two radii or three radii. Sounds so weird. I don't like it. Um, but no units. Radians have no units. So that's really powerful. It saves us from a lot of headaches. So that's why we like it so much. Or 180 degrees is equal to pi. So from either one of those, knowing that two things are equal, we can also make a really nice claim. If you divide it, uh, one thing by something that's equal to it, you should get one. So just like three over three is one and five over five is one. This is our whole dimensional analysis thing where we say, okay, well, if that's true, then 360 degrees divided by two pi radians uh, is equal to one and two pi radians over 360 degrees would also be equal to one. And the thing that's important about that is we can always multiply something by one without changing its value. So we use this all the time, change the appearance of numbers, change the units attached to numbers by multiplying by one written in a tricky way. And if you want, you can reduce these. It doesn't matter. You don't need to memorize both of these things, but pick one and stick with it. 180 over pi is equal to one and pi over 180 is equal to one. So this is what's gonna allow us to convert back and forth between these fairly easily. And I want you to be able to do that. So for example, if I have 200 degrees and I wanna convert it to radians, I'm gonna multiply by one. And I'm gonna multiply by one in a very particular way. I'm gonna multiply by one in a way that has degrees in the bottom to cancel out. So I will use this one right here. Here. So I'm going to say pi over 180 and you can cancel out the degrees and you're basically going to get 200 pi over 180. And if you get a nice exact number with a pi in it, don't convert it to a decimal. Don't approximate it unless there's a word problem and you feel like you have a good reason that that would be an easier answer to work with. Do try to reduce these things. So let's see, we can say, okay, that's 20 pi over 18. And then I can at least take a two out of that. I get 10 and nine. So 10 pi over nine, I think is the nicest version of that answer. Okay, convert seven pi over nine to degrees. So this is going the opposite direction, seven pi over nine. So notice this doesn't have any units. Uh, so what we're really trying to do is we're trying to introduce the unit's degrees. So we're going to want at this point to choose one that has degrees on top. Uh, the pi's uh, can cancel out here and that's great. But remember, pi isn't a unit. That might sound silly right now, but as you get into doing this, people start to not think about pi just as a number anymore, just because the way we count with it so much. So pi is not a unit. Um, it's just a number. It's just part of the seven pi over nine. So I'm going to multiply by the 180 over pi. And again, you can use the top one if it's easier for you to remember. This one's just already a little reduced, so I kind of like that. So the pi's will cancel. 
I did successfully introduce degrees, so that's good. So I get 7 times 180 degrees over 9. And you can reduce in the previous step if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and do it here. Okay, so 9 should go into 180 really nicely uh, 20 times. So now I have 7 times 20 degrees, which is 140 degrees, which is beautiful. And I will keep it just like that. Um, okay, last but not least, five, uh, 5 radians to degrees. And I wrote the word radians in there just because people get really stumped by this one. It's actually a simpler number in some ways, but it messes with people because they get really used to seeing that pi. So if we have 5 radians, oh, I have a really skinny pink pen, and we want to turn it into degrees, it's actually the same step that we did last time. We'll introduce degrees by multiplying in 180 over pi. And then this one, this is one where I think there's a good argument for converting it to a decimal because having that divided by pi in degrees is not the most convenient thing. I have no idea what to do with that. Um, but let's see, 5 times 180. So 10 times 180 would be 1,800. And half of that is 900 over pi degrees and I didn't get a calculator tool up and I don't think I'll switch right now because I don't want you to have to watch me fiddle but this I think there's a great argument for saying that's a really not uh, useful way to have a number in degrees written so that would be one where I think it's totally fine to plug that in your calculator and give me back an approximate so if you're ever unsure what should be exact and what should be approximate let me know but my thinking is always about like okay what is useful here uh, if there's no reason to convert to a decimal and round and get an approximate answer then don't because exact answers are great but if you get something and there's like no way you can really think about how big that is or not an nice way, then decimals might be a good answer. Okay, thanks for watching.